In the recent patch, the developers of Snowprint announced a new out-of-game feature for Tacticus. The Tacticus API allows us to enhance our experience and build innovative tools, so today we're going to take a look at what we've done with it. One of the things I did when I started Tacticus was build a Google Planner sheet that allowed players to track their progress of all their units in as user-friendly a way as possible. For me, I'm not a fan of tracking stuff on apps and prefer to use good old spreadsheets to track everything. Since then, I've updated the sheet multiple times, adding more and more functionality as the game grows. And now the sheets are used by thousands of you every day, completely for free. The sheets will never have advertising on them, and as long as I'm making videos, I'm going to be updating them for you. My principle has always been to keep things as easy as possible for you and not add features or data that I wouldn't use myself on a regular basis. This has kept them focused and useful. With all that said, there's always been one big frustration with my sheets. We always had to manually update from our in-game progress. But now, with the release of the new game API, the sheets will automatically update themselves and you barely need to do anything except click a handy little button after grabbing the latest sheet. So let's take a look and see how it works. And in the meantime, if you want to earn some free Blackstone to help you on your way, you can use my referral friend code in game today to get 100 free Blackstone. Just note you can only use one referral friend code, so make sure you make the most of it. So everything is pretty much the same as you know and love, and it's been important for me to make sure that you're not going to have to relearn absolutely everything all over again. So the first thing to do is look at the FAQ and instructions page. I've updated the how to use it section. Firstly, as always with my sheets, we're going to create a copy. Come to file, make a copy, and then it'll open in a new window. Now that we have a copy, we're going to be able to make the changes that we need. So next step is to go to the api.tacticusgame.com website and here you're going to be able to generate your API key. You will need to sign in with your Snowprint ID and once that's done, you're going to have the option to create a new API key. You'll set the read access to player, days active, leave it as unlimited and feel free to name it. Click create a new key. It'll ask you for confirmation. Go ahead and do that and then it's going to appear in your API keys collection. The key itself will be appearing here, although I've blanked out my own key. But what you're going to do is just click this little icon here and then I'll copy Copy it to your clipboard, then come back to my sheets and copy your code into this cell. It's really important you copy it into cell G32 and not anywhere else. Next to this, there is a cell where you can switch automatic updates on or off. If automatic updates are on, then the sheet will grab your data once an hour. If not, then you will have to click on the click me button every time you want it to update. The first time you click on this button, you're going to be asked to log in to allow the scripts to work. This is obviously a very scary moment for all you players as some weird sheet is asking you for your login, but I do assure you that it's safe. In order to prove this, I'll show you exactly what the code does. But first, click on OK, sign in to your appropriate account, click on Advanced, and go to the Untitled Project Unsafe. Then this will ask your Untitled Project, which is just this Sheets, whether you're allowed to have access to your Google account. Click Allow, and that's you. Now, for us normal people, the code isn't going to make any sense, but there are definitely people in the community who will be able to check it for validity and security purposes. So let's go and have a look at what the code looks like. If we go to Extensions, App Script, this will open a new window where all my code is written. It's split into four different parts. Firstly, there's a get API key function, and this just grabs your API from the cell that you put it into. This is why we need to be careful that we go into G32 cell. Then, fetch and setup trigger sets up the automatic updates and also show you the last time the sheets were updated. The fetch all player units is where the heavy lifting for grabbing your data happens, and this will go through just a bunch of things, grabbing the data from the API and putting it into a sheet, which I'll show you in a second. Finally, the test API is working. Function is not an important script, but was just helping me to debug some problems. So if we come back and we left click on the click me button, we will see this running scripts appearing. And then the last updated should update as well. As you can see, everything worked fine here. But if you've got any problems, then reach out to me on Discord or in the comments below and I'll try my best to help. 
So now that it's set up, what does it actually do? Well, I have a hidden sheet that stores all your information to start with. It has the unit ID, which is what Snowprint calls the characters in their code. It has their alliance, faction, their in-game character name. Their current rank and also rank are actually two linked parts. Rank is this in a numerical fashion, and then I convert it to the correct naming conventions. We've got the star level, which I also convert in a second. I'll show you in the main page. We've got the XP level. We've got your passive and active abilities. And then it's got a list of their upgrades you've already given them. So now if we move to the Who You Own sheet, we can see that everybody that I own has been taken into the sheet. And I own a lot of them. It has their current rank. It has their stars. It has their passive and actives. It has their upgrades here. And everything is basically exactly as we expect it to be. Then all the other sheets will pull from this sheet as normal. And you don't need to change anything except your target rank and your priority. So you might want to, for example, sort this by alphabetical order and save your target rank and priority in a separate sheet. So when you do need to grab an updated sheet, all you need to do is copy this across and make a couple of adjustments if there's a new character and you're done. No longer do you need to copy everything and try and work out your current rank as we did before. Please note though that some of the names have annoyingly changed because the API calls them something different from the rest of the game itself. So for example, Abaddon the Despoiler is now just called a bad in. You can see the rest of the changes on screen now. This is a bit annoying and I might fix it on my end in a later update, but let's just see how annoying it is. And okay, now that you've understood the new part, I want to share the instruction video for the rest of my sheets. Everything else is pretty much the same, so we're going to have Castell and Creed and Sergeant Kell go through everything for you. This is really for new players to my sheets, or just as a refresher for you. If you're already familiar with my sheets, you don't need to watch the rest of the video, and you can go and enjoy your day. Hello, I'm Castell and Creed, and today, Color Sergeant Jaron Kell and I are going to investigate the new combined Google Sheets, and then teach any of you maggots who aren't using them how they work. All right, thanks, Castellan. First, before we start editing, what we need to do is make a copy of the sheet. To do this, just go to the top of the sheet, click on File, and then Make a Copy, and then click on Make a Copy. This will open a new sheet that you can edit. The first tab we can see is the FAQ and Instructions tab. This gives you most of the information you need to use the sheet. It also has a change log, so you can see if the sheet has changed since you last grabbed them. The Who You Own sheet shows a list of all the released alliances, clans and characters, and if you hover over them, you have a link direct to their wiki page. The current rank lets you use the drop-down menu to select the rank of your characters based on what they are in-game. So with my Ultramarines, I have them stuck at Stone 1. For the target rank, this is the rank you are aiming to get to. We need the Ultramarines for the first campaign, so I've set them to Silver 1. The priority lets us know who we want to level first. In this case, it's Bellator first, then Certus and so on. If we want to change the priority around, then just change these numbers as you want and hit the little triangle on the top and select sort A to Z. Last thing on this sheet is the item parts. If you want to be very precise, you can actually mark which items you have got in-game for each character. In this case, I have items 1 to 5 for Bellator and 3, 4 and 5 for Certus. That's not the last thing on the sheet, soldier. You forgot about the advanced options. Ah yes, the advanced options are over on the right hand side of the sheet and allow you to set how much energy you gain per day. Just add a little X with the ones you use. It also lets you pick which type of characters you are collecting shards for as this will reduce your overall energy you can use for items. Underneath this you can change the average energy per item. Some of our more experienced players may want to reduce the epic amount here, but you can check out one of Jace's earlier videos showing how those percentages work. Finally, on the right-hand side, there is a leveling plan for you if you want to use it. I add in the characters I am focusing on, just so I don't forget. That's everything you need to fill in to get started. If we look at the Timeline tab, we can now see how long your characters will take to level. So Bellator will take roughly six days to go from Stone 1 to Silver 1. And he says roughly, because you can get other sources of items and energy, like items from your guildmates, free daily chests or character events, and energy from tournament rewards, or whenever the developers mess up and have to give us some for free. In the Upgrades tab, you can just see all the upgrades for each character's level, including the latest Diamond 1 items.
Then we come onto the legendary event tabs. These are split into each legendary event currently available to us. So only on Shi and Shadow Sun right now. In the sheet, you can see the three tracks, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, then the battles for each. And finally, a long list of characters who are available in each battle. At the bottom of the sheet, you can see an auto-suggested team based on your highest ranking characters available. Then there are two spaces, one of the core teams and one for the holes teams. If you watch my How to Plan for the Next Legendary Event series, you will see me talk more about what these mean, but generally you just want to add in one team per battle in the core or whole space. Then right at the bottom there is a space for you to take notes of who you want to level based on this legendary event. This is sometimes useful for planning your characters. On the right of the sheet, we can see the characters' total points available from all the battles they can participate in, the number of times we have picked them in the core or whole spaces, and finally the number of points based on the battles they have been picked for. In the Your Best Teams tab, it shows four different columns. Your best characters in the currently available legendary events, and then their overall score in the first columns. This is calculated from all of the characters you own. Then in the last column, it shows you the score for the characters you picked in the legendary events. Finally, the Best Teams Overall tab is pretty similar to the Your Best Teams tab. The only difference is that this shows the results for all characters in the game. So right now, based on points only, Tyrant Guard, Snapper Wrecker, Angrax, Onshi, and Volk lead the way. So with the Legendary Progress tab, you will have seen this in previous videos, as this is how I track and remember my progress in green. Anywhere you can see a red square shows where I got stuck and need to improve before the next event starts. I've added some new functionality into the Teams section. Here it will automatically update which teams you have chosen in each legendary sheet. You just need to fill in the core or holes team sections and then it will automatically be added here too. This means when a legendary event is running, I can just focus on this sheet. To add or remove the green boxes to show your progress, just click on the check boxes to add or remove a tick. The red boxes are slightly more annoying, you must type a small x into the box. When you want to clear the x, just copy one of the other check boxes over the top of it. I have found this sheet very useful during legendary events and preparing for an upcoming event where you can quickly see your previous progress, so I hope you will too. And that's everything for today. I hope this free tool continues to be of great use to you in tracking your Tacticus career. Do keep an eye out for further updates from the link below, especially when new characters are added to the game. And if you have any feedback about the sheets, then feel free to hit me up in the comments.